I like that Rust wants to try to solve actual problems. On the other hand, you know, they massively overblow what those problems are. And um, the problem is that's not the only thing. Like software culture is super broken, right, across the board. And they inherit all that brokenness, right? So, hey, they're not going to have that many buffer overflows. It's like, great, neither are we. But meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, you guys are inheriting all this brokenness that's leading to the most giant, most bloated, least functional software in history. Here's the thing. Buffer overflows are bad, and it's stupid to have them in your programs. But do you know how little we fucking care about buffer overflows, actually? Like, okay, everybody freaks out. Everybody says, like, oh, my God, software is so insecure because you can do these buffer override attacks and shit. You guys know, the experienced programmers in chat will know that it's trivial in C to neutralize the effect of like over 99% of those buffer overflows attacks. And nobody even gives enough of a shit to even do that. Like literally nobody cares. All right. And if you're wondering what I mean, okay, the thing that makes those attacks so dangerous, the, the biggest vulnerability is you override a buffer such that the end of the buffer stomps the return address, right? And you put, you put the address of your code that you want the program to jump to, right? And it returns to that address, and then you take over the code, okay? That's, that's the number one buffer overflow attack. Um, it's trivial to make that impossible. Trivial in C. And nobody gives a shit. Nobody even bothers to do it. I mean, by nobody, I don't mean literally nobody, but almost nobody. Right? All you do is you put in your compiler, and compilers all have an option for this, by the way. Clang and GCC have this option. You put in your compiler, hey, hey man, um, I want there to be actually two different stacks. Let's have one stack for the secure data, such as the return address, right? And other compiler controlled things that need to be unscathed by errant user input. And then we have another stack for all this shit. And then maybe if there's an overflow bug, it'll overflow the intended thing and it'll go into other data arenas, but those other data arenas are not critical to the control flow of the program. And so it is much, much harder to attack the program. Uh, nobody does it. Nobody does it. So s given that empirical evidence that nobody even fucking bothers, how are you so convinced that buffer overflows, like fixing buffer overflows is the panacea for the world? Because we already, we already could have done, we've known how to do that for like, I mean, we've known how to do it forever, but the, Let's, let's look up when these options went in. Um, I forget what, exactly what it's called. Secondary stack option. Um, stack protection. Say shadow stack is what they call it. Um, I think. Okay, um, when, this is exactly the kind of question you can't ask from Google anymore. When did GCC add this? I don't know. We could ask ChatGPT, but it would just make up a year. It was a long time ago. Chromium fixes tens of memory bugs. What you're saying has nothing to do with what I'm saying. So you would not hire me. I would not hire you.
at this point, I just can't tolerate hacker news dudes who have like, you know, their claim to fame in software engineering is they wrote FizzBuzz 2.0 and they think they know everything. Let's just look for, let's look for this. Glendale Community College. Dude. Does the, does the dash mean something bad in Google? I don't know. It's impossible to find information anymore. Stake. Enable shadow stack built-in functions from control flow enforcement. Yeah. Anyway, the point being, I don't remember, I don't know. Somebody can search and try to figure out when this option was added. It was a long time ago, dude. Like, like I think I was talking to Tom Lord about this in the 90s. Okay. In the literal 1990s. So, so we've had this forever and people don't even care enough to use it. Um, it should be the default, actually, on C, C and C++ programs. And I don't know why it isn't. Um, but it should be. You've not heard these ideas before. Well, I, see, this is, this is what I'm saying, though, right? This is what I'm saying. Is, and I, I don't exactly understand. I don't understand what happened here is what I'm saying, because this is obviously a good idea for C programs. Now, it does incur a small performance penalty, because what happens, because you have two stacks, right? Now, whenever you return from a function, you have to like manually pop the other stack as well. Okay. Um, but that's like a couple of instructions per function call. And for many, many years, we've been in a regime where a couple extra instructions per function call is effectively free because programs spend all their time waiting on data. And if you have a function that's so small that that matters, it's probably inline these days anyway, because compilers are very aggressive about inlining. So, um, like, it doesn't, like, it's obviously should be the default. Like, this should be dash no m sh stick to not do it. And, and yet nobody cares. And the fact that nobody cares makes it weird that everybody's acting like these kind of attacks are the worst thing in the world. I agree they're bad. I'm not saying these attacks aren't bad. I'm not saying these bugs aren't bad to have in your program. They are bad to have in your program. But the mystery to me is nobody cares. It's just like everybody on the web doesn't care that it takes 10 seconds to load their web page and they claim it's actually as fast as possible, but you go to the web page and it obviously takes 10 seconds to load, right? It's like, okay, everybody gives lip service that these kind of bugs are bad and yet the obvious mitigations are not performed. There should be hardware support for shadow stacks. I mean, that would be fine, but you, you kind of don't need it though, because it's a general purpose CPU, right? Like you're fine. What a great flag name. Yeah. Oh, I know this is, this is in the Unix tradition right here. Yeah. Like this is inexcusable to me. You're like, okay you could learn another programming language and literally rewrite all software or you could use this compiler flag <laughs> and it's like nobody does i mean that's a little bit of an overstatement because you would still again you would still have buffer overflow bugs in your program it does this doesn't get rid of the buffer overflow bug but what it does 
is it makes it dramatically less of a security risk and it makes your program much harder to attack and it makes it much less of a vulnerability, right? So, yeah, exactly. It does not prevent overflows from happening. So what will happen instead, because instead of like the return address, what would be next up on the stack would be, you know, um, other, uh, other data from your own program, right? So then your program probably crashes or whatever. And you can, you know, it would be possible in some cases for some programs to figure out how to maliciously put data into other variables to get the program to do things that it didn't want to do. But this is tremendously harder than just stomping the return address. Because you have to analyze and understand the individual program and blah, blah, blah. Like, it just, the situation would get so much better if people just did this. Our buffer overflows at normal. I mean, in see, here's the thing. In a C or C++ program, yes. So C and C++ are very error prone in terms of, you know, creating situations where you're going to accidentally overflow a buffer. So yeah, C and C++ programs tend to have a lot of these problems. Programs in other languages, even just that are one step away from C or C++, do not tend to have remotely as many of that kind of problem because the abstractions are just different. So for example, in D or like Go, you know, Go, you don't really do raw pointer stuff, but it's got the similar thing semantically where you're passing arrays all around all the time. C and C and C++, you pass like a pointer and then maybe a length that your program uses to know how much valid data is in the pointer, but the compiler doesn't know that those two things are associated, so the compiler can't really check automatically or anything, right? In many newer languages, including the one that we're working on now, if I will shut up, um, the, uh, you don't really do that hardly ever, right? Instead, you pass arrays around, and arrays are bounded, and so your errors get caught during development. And that's very useful, right? So before you even talk about, you know, making memory more safe in some fundamental way, the thing to realize is that most new languages are much better than C and C++ about that kind of a thing to begin with. Because just the, the, the patterns are different. Safe stack is from around 2014. Interesting. I'm surprised it took that long because, like I said, people were talking about that in the 90s. It was probably just more of a manual thing that you had to do. M stick. Canaries also exist. Yeah. I mean, canaries are good as well, but they serve a different function, right? A canary is to tell you. Well, it depends. I, you could have, you could generate canaries that work in arbitrary ways, but but the most common one, the most classic one, is to just tell you that you effed up while you're developing, right? Like Visual Studio had those going way back, and they were really useful. I didn't say. Google and Microsoft don't know about the flags. I said nobody cares enough to use them and or make them work well. Imagine using Google or Microsoft as your example of high quality software engineering. Lawler coaster. Okay. We, uh, I should have, while we were talking, run the release compiler because that's where we left off here. I'm going to run this in LLVM as well. If those both work, we will take a W. Like, that's how you know someone isn't really that experienced at programming, is they're like, how dare you suggest that Microsoft doesn't know what's good, <laughs> right? 
how dare you suggest that Microsoft isn't the best programmers? 